Hi guys, it's me Julia. I'm back with another kiln opening. Yay! It's been far too long. I've had things that I could do, but I've just had other things on my mind, let's say. So, without further ado, because I don't want to run the battery out on my phone, I'm going to get into it. I have had a sneaky little peek, and I'm not particularly happy with the piece. That doesn't happen very often where glazes fail me or I fail the glazes. So, um, which shall I do first? I'll show you this piece from the community kiln. So I've done a plate. It was a slip cast plate and it was my first go at kind of drawing with under glazes. And I thought I'd do a paisley kind of pattern i was just winging it and making it up as i went along and you know these i quite like this bit and i quite like the tulips but i don't know what i was thinking when i was doing these because it it kind of looks like a caterpillar with udders <laughs> but i still like it as my kind of First little plate that I that I've kept. There's a little sticky bit on the back that I need to grind off, and I've done dots on the base and my little stamp. So I don't think it was too bad for my first kind of go out freehand drawing. It was sketchy doing black lines because I was just using a paintbrush and. So I'll maybe have to invest in some designer liners or something like that. So that's the first piece. Let's get into the kiln. Do you want to have a little look? I wonder if it would be easy. Let me just take you off here then. Let's have a little look. In there. Some exciting things at the bottom, but look at that ball. How horrible is it? <laughs> okay, right, I'm gonna put you back on here without trying to put my hand over the screen. Sorry, hand. Right, okay, I think that's okay. I can move you slightly this way. So, we might as well start with the poopy one. I have no idea what happened to this. This is two smoky merlot and three blossom flux. I've done it before and it's looked, looked okay. This doesn't, this. If I didn't know myself better, I would say that I haven't glazed it well. But I'm usually pretty good at glazing, you know me. If you've seen my glazing videos, I glaze really heavy so maybe it was even just too heavy on the blossom flux but it kind of looks even just stripy and patchy anyway the back looks slightly better I did a um is that a no actually that's a roller a small roller yeah small roller a little wooden one it's just kind of like a chain link fence kind of thing just along the middle and then did the colour with the blossom flux on its own there and some little cute little feet so yeah I mean even on the feet there is a little bit of blending as it's run down which looks nice but maybe it's just not deep enough because it's quite a shallow plate but let's just move on okay that is that one will i reglaze it will i just throw it on the floor and smash it to smithereens <laughs> i'm not sure <laughs> right now i did show you on one video i think um my brain you know I have a piece of driftwood with lots of 
spears hanging off it, but some got broken. And if I've got spare bits of clay, I tend to just make spheres or near spheres, you know, they're not perfect. Um, so I have two here. They'll probably have lots of stilts stuck to them because, oh, actually they're not. Yay. They were, I had to like make like a little minefield of stilts to stop them rolling around because uh, when I did some pumpkins back in the autumn last year, two pumpkins fell over and kissed each other and got stuck. So I didn't want these two and I didn't want them rolling off the half shelf onto two nice pots below. So anyway, stop waffling, Julia. This is just little dot daisies. Because I'd already um, glaze fired them. I must have done because they didn't adhere, the uh, clear didn't adhere very well. It wasn't drying. So um, I must have had them thinking that I was just going to do them plain white and then have the other idea of doing them with colour. So just little dot daisies. Pretty simple. Just to make it a little bit different. That was that in there because I don't want it rolling around. This one. Oh, and he's come off too. Wow. Oh, I'm super happy about that. Right, this is another one, and I've been doing cherries. This is on buff though, this. It must have been a just no bit of buff that I had left. And I did wipe back a little bit to stop it. <laughs> it's rolling around in that bowl. Um, yeah, I wiped a little bit back to stop it sticking in case it, uh, in case it was going to stick too much to the stilts, little cherries on buff. Not too super exciting, but again, it's just practicing with the application. Yeah, there is actually one that must have stuck a little bit to the stilt but it's still much, much better than I thought it was going to be. All right, I'm going to put him with his friend in that bowl, stay. Right, let me move this half shelf. Oh, I thought I was going to have to remove sticks, so I'm pretty happy about that. Let's have a little peek. Oh, right, let me move these big, because I just have one shelf on the bottom and then the chunky broken half shelf. Uh, on that, so I'm just going to move these uh, before they do any damage. Right, let's have a look. Right, four and one first. I had done some marbling of a couple of clays that I got. I got that big bucket, if you remember. I said a few kiln loads ago, and I thought I'd just marble a little bit of it together, and it was supposed to be like a white and a grey, but it's just more. That's nice, isn't it? With the honeycomb on the back. Um, yeah, I wanted to see what the marbling would come out with. Not really that visible on there. So yeah, I'll just leave that one. I didn't want to cover it up because I thought, well, I want to see what the marbling looks like. But pretty boring, actually, as it turns out. Okay, now another little cutie. This is... Well, maybe you can tell me where it is because I don't really know. I thought it looked like a egg cup. It's a little mould. Uh, it's lip cast mould. Um, one of the ones that I rescued. And I wanted some plain little animals. I thought it was just a little rabbit. I just wanted some plain little animals so I could put start practicing little prints on. Um, but anyway, I did mini cherries. But I, I really don't know if it's an egg cup. That's how it came out. I mean, I didn't think that, like, I wouldn't think that I would be cutting around here. Or would I? It would still have a big hole in it. But as a little egg cup, I think an egg would fit in there. I think it would look really quite cute. 
So I think that's what I'm going to use it as. It's a really poopy day today. It's raining and windy and horrible. And it's the middle of July in England, 14 degrees, rain and wind. So, yeah. What do you think it is? Could you put a little votive in there? But it would only, you would only get the light from the top. Could I put a little votive in and put little holes in or would that be really mean to the rabbit? He's kind of cute. He's still got a little face there. It's worn down a little bit because it's an old mould, but yeah. I want to try little flowers and things. This isn't the only, well, there's that cherry ball, this little cherry thing. It's a bit of a cherry themed. Um, so I'll put him down. Okay, might as well get the other cherry thing out. Well, I asked you last time what I should do on the stein that I had, and several people gave me ideas, but I was kind of pressed for time. So it has cherries on! <laughs> and a little red handle. Yeah, that's not bad. And I didn't have a super, super, like, cherry kind of colour. It looks a lot more orange actually on the screen. It is more red in my light. This was the first, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got fog. This was the first one that I did. <clears throat> and then I did the little rabbit and then the ball. So I kind of practice with cherries, but yeah, I really like the cherries. You know, I got the idea because I have a little cardigan with big cherries on and I, it was on my uh, bed and I thought actually you know I'm gonna put cherries on other things <laughs> so I can wear my cherry cardigan and drink from my cherry style <laughs> and be matching oh and I have a cherry on the bottom that's so cute actually I did the circles with have I got it here it's just a little, let me just have a look on here. Yes, I have one here. I did the circles with one of these little cutters. It's like a little metal cutter with a little plastic end. And I think I just dipped the end in the underglaze and gave it a circle and then coloured it in. And it worked really, really well. I was super pleased with it. So that is the cherry star. It has a little bit of pit hole in. I'm not going to get Mako Zinc Free Clear anymore because I have had pit hole in with it, but I'm wondering whether it is actually because of the cast and slip. I'm using a B17C Stoneware Cast and Slip. So if any of you guys out there have used that, do you get pinhole in with your clear? Right, onwards and upwards, I've got three pieces left. I'm going to do the big one first. Ooh. Oh, okay, this is a planter. So when I got the um, bucket of clay, all the, the guy's scrap clay, I had bought a few moulds off him, one of them, was a kind of a planter mold and I wanted to do my dot ball kind of situation in the planter. So that's, oh wow, that has a lot of pit, pit pinholes. I wonder if something's happening with my firing. I might change it up a little bit. because it has some pinholes in the bottom. Not that it would matter using it as a planter anyway, so I'll still be able to use it. But yeah, isn't that funny? This is the way the universe works. It plays jokes on you. So a couple of kiln loads ago I'd said, or I'd said to somebody, my firing schedule is good. I don't hardly ever get pinholes. And then in the last load, I had a couple of pinholes and in this one I've got even more. <laughs> the universe is so funny. 
Right, so, ancient copper, it's the old ancient copper on big dots with the rich top. I'm not sure if it's rich toasted actually. I feel like it is, but that doesn't look like rich toasted. It might have been the end of a buff pack because I've run out of buff at home now. But anyway, not to matter. That is not a lot of um, crystals on it really. What I might actually do is take it into the community kiln and throw it back through there because that's hotter. I wonder if I should actually ramp the heat up a little bit. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ramp the heat up a little bit. But I'll tell you what it is now, shall I? Where did I put my paper? I'm very haphazard today. So, that's not it. Look. And it is three inch of copper, as I said. One vert luster all over, one ivy, and then another ivy. So it's vert luster and ivy, but I've graduated. So I've done one, and then I've gone up, I've done two to there and three to there, because ivy likes to, you know, run a lot. It could be to do with the ivy. It might be too thick inside, maybe. But we'll see. I think I will put it back through the community kiln. I'm sure they won't mind. I might even put a bit more glaze on the top, maybe a different green. Mm. We'll see. See what happens with that. But as a planter itself, it works. So I've had the theme of bowls for quite a while now, haven't I? So I've, you know, I've made a lot of bowls and glazed many different ways and tried to show different varieties of uh, glazes for you. But now I'm feeling like I want to go back to a little bit more, um, what's the word? I want to say structural, but I don't think it's the right word. I want to go back to hand building more um, sculptural, that's the word I'm using, pieces, because I just, I'm just being drawn in that direction at the minute. So I started on a new theme and my theme is femininity. It's quite a strong theme really, uh, to try to do in clay. This was the first one that I did. I'll tell you the story. I started out, I went to the Dorman Museum near me, went through their uh, ceramics. They've got ceramics from the 1890s onwards. Um, took a few bits of inspiration, came home and thought, well, I'll make something like that one. Started to make it and then it morphed itself into something else. And that's when I came up with the idea of femininity because this little jug here just wanted this curve. It just, there was something about it that I really wanted to press that seam in because it's where the seam was. And I was just, it just felt very feminine. You know, like the curve, of, on the back of a curvy lady and then when I showed it to Nat at Mud Magic she said it was kind of like a pregnant woman you know like holding her back because she's got this big baby in her belly um, but it was more on the motherly love kind of I gave her a heart shape here and then that's mirrored in the heart shape handle so she's kind of a beautiful curvy lady and she is, she's called Curvy Girl because I wrote a little thing on the bottom. And she is just in, so she's in buff and she's just in two sangria. I wanted something that was like girly, you know. And actually I thought it might have been 
not as floaty as that. I only did two. Thought the red might have come through because that to me looks more kimchi like. But inside I did pink opal because I was just trying to get rid of it and then put the sangria down over it. Let's have a look what that looks like. Oh, actually, that's nice. So just around the rim here. Um, silly brain. Yeah, just around this bit is pink opal with sangria on. So, see if it'll focus. That's actually nice, isn't it? Yeah, I would, I would possibly try that on a different one, but she's just curvy and you just can't help but run your finger down that beautiful line. I love it. It's just, I mean, it's not the most practical handle for pouring, but she's more sculptural than practical, you know, and I just, and I've, toyed with all the different ways that I could do that heart handle and I didn't want to put it because I have initially was going to do it straight but then it would have disrupted the beautiful beautiful curve going down there it just really invites your finger in it's lovely so yeah this is her so she's number one of three pieces only have two in here let's have a look at her oh oh she looks so pretty look at her she's called sassy girl she's a vase sassy girl vase and she is two vert luster one ivy sangria again on buff and oatmeal to blend the two i'd hoped it would be that is what i hoped it would be it's moved slightly on that side but still beautiful and pinholes so yeah but we'll ignore that so this is her. She has some attitude and she has curly hair. This is the little fluted. So two sangria on the top. Let's have a compare to the sangria over here. Look, looks totally different. How is that? You can just never even with me, when I think that I have really consistent glazer, you just can never tell. This is what I would expect from Sangria, that extra kind of readiness. But anyway, apart from the little pin holes, she's an absolute stunner. I mean, you just, you know, attitude. And there's just a little bit where it's not. I didn't go with the ivy all the way down because I was really, really worried about it falling off. But yeah, she's... So I have one more that I've already done. Is she in here? Oh no, she's in the kiln. She, she's in the community kiln. That's the one I made last week. She is a jug sassy girl with a different hairdo so a different kind of uh top to it so that would be it <laughs> and my battery's lasted which is great i am working more on the sculptural thing i do have a few um different things to get on with as far as already bisked and finally I'll show you I have this huge bowl similar to that one but a big one I broke it twice whilst making it in the 
greenware stitch. So this out of three is the only one that survived. That's with the that bump of texture on the cobblestone uh, texture on the bottom. So I have that one to glaze. Not sure what to do in that one. And I have I have a smaller one actually like that one, but it's cracked. And I have this uh, chip and dip bowl that I've done like a kind of, uh, that I'm going to do the moon. I think I'm going to do it in pinks with different pinks in the bottom. So I have a few to get on with. I have some more of the little bunnies and I am doing my mosaic. I have some pieces already. Uh, for my mosaic, I'm cutting out all of these little petal shapes and I have a kind of plan and I have some more drying over here. I'll see if I can show you. Where are they? I have these tulips to go in as well, tulip petals. Uh, and some other I'm doing a big mosaic for my living room wall so I have some things to get on with oh I show you this one as well last Kelnord was some masks the Buddha and the you can see it on my wall there actually if I turn you around let me just see if I can do that can you see? Oh, there you can. She's there on the wall. Right. Try not to get you to fall over. It's all sorry about that. It's all wonky. So, inspired by making the masks, I thought if I wanted to make masks again in future, it would be a really good idea to have a mold. So, I did a mold. Looks like a robot. But. It's a really good kind of just to start off a mask and then build up from there because the masks that I did were really wide jawed and I wanted a much slimmer one. She's got a much slimmer face. So might do some masks as well. So I have lots of ideas, not a lot of energy and I have some other things going on as well at the minute. So um i'll do my best i'm going to i'm determined to get the rest of that stuff in the kiln so in the next week maybe two there'll definitely be another kiln not out thank you so much everybody for being patient with me you know you know my situation i'm just super super grateful that you stick by me and you watch my videos and you know if you haven't subscribed yet please do it really really means a lot to me um only i think it's something like 28 percent of people who watch my videos actually subscribe in fact it might even be less than that uh, so if you haven't subscribed please do and i'm thinking of some more tutorials so what would you like uh, me to do. Do you want me to do a mask tutorial? Um, or if you go back and have a look through some of my old, old videos, I have some nice things like vases um, that are really quite simple to do, but really, really effective. So have a look through and see what you would like me to show you. I can show you sassy ladies. I can show you uh, how to do spheres as well. I think the lighting's going funny in here. Anyway, I'll stop off then. I keep saying that every time done and then I just still go on and on for another 10 minutes after. So anyway, thank you so much guys. I really appreciate every single one of you. Please do give me a nice, uh, like and the comment it really helps my channel since I reached a thousand 
things have slowed down um, on YouTube. So if you can like and subscribe and comment, that would be really helpful. And I'll leave it there and I shall see you in about a week or two. Okay, take care guys. Bye. <laughs>